Well, we're not in Winslow, Arizona, and there's no girl in a flatbed Ford, but we are in Ajo, Arizona, in the field. Last week, we learned about Tanajas and how important they are to the wildlife out here in the Sonoran Desert. Hi, bees. Let's just play nice together. But to understand the full scope of just how vital these Tanajas are, we had to return during the night. And in that darkness, the desert really becomes an entirely different world. So we came out to this Tanaha called the what White, it, tanks. White Tanks. And while they're dry right now, uh, they often fill with water and bring animals around. And while we haven't seen any animals because there's obviously no water, the camera that they did place out here did catch a bunch of animals. So, so what are you finding right now, Joe? Uh, so uh, this is a great picture of a bighorn sheep oh, and just coming up over the rocks at the Tanaha and just, uh, just a great picture. We've also been seeing a lot of Gamble's quail. Uh, we even caught a picture of a badger yeah. uh, and some foxes that had caught dinner for the evening. It was a really cool shot with whatever they caught in their mouth. We've got really a lot of different stuff uh, that we're seeing out here. Just a really neat collection. Even though the, the townhouses are dry, animals are starting to anticipate that monsoon season coming in and seeing if there's any water here yet. Oh my gosh, so they're, they're going back to where they know they can find water as well as food. Exactly, and this might just be a lot of these animals' home ranges. Um, I noticed a big burrow actually not too far away. Uh, of, might, might have been the burrow of that badger hidden in, beneath one of these rocks. Well, maybe when the monsoons finally hit, it'll come out more often. Yeah, maybe we'll get some good pictures of amphibians and some other wildlife out here that you don't normally see. Oh, excellent. Okay. It's 1030 at night here in Arizona, but it's actually 1230 at night back home in Texas. And we've been going since 7 o'clock this morning. And uh, we're celebrating a good day's worth of shooting with campfire coffee and I gotta say it's, it's delicious. But making coffee wasn't all we had to stop for. Wouldn't you know it, we got a flat tire driving back out to the natural Tanaha. Everything out here either pokes or bites or does something. And so we go through a lot of tires. Um, and so being a scientist out here means you're going to be very proficient at changing tires. So John, you know how we were here earlier today and you didn't see much in terms of wildlife. Right, right. Well, there's a lot more out here at night. So here, if we take your light, you can see <gasps> a Sonoran toad there. Oh yeah, look at him. Now what they do is they come down here at night and they hydrate. So when they come in, they look all sunken in and they go and hang out in the water a bit and so absorb they're, water. They're kind of like a dry sponge. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. Okay. Actually, they store a lot of the water in their bladder and uh, can then reuse it out of their bladder. So are they hunting too while they're hanging out at the water trough? Um, yes, they, they, they will hunt as well. And when you get rains, um, this place will be loud. Um, they'll be calling for mates. But you really don't see that happen unless they're cued to breed and that is when you have uh, rains and thunderstorms. There's one right over your shoulder, too. Let's see. Oh, sure enough, look here. Get myself into it. Come on, come on. He's gonna blow himself up. Mm -hmm. Come on, you can come out. You can come out. Yeah, good boy. Oh, wow. And so what you hear him doing is a release call. And so amphibians, um, 
they they have external fertilization, mm -hmm. and they'll catch on to anything that moves. And so the males will actually do release calls saying, "Hey, <laughs> I'm not the female. Let me go." Gotcha. So, and he's peeing all over me right now. Right, right. Can I can I hold him? You can hold him. Okay, hold on. Here we go. Put this in my pocket. Yeah, and Sorry. you don't don't squeeze him. Yeah. So he's releasing a lot of the water that he absorbs. So he's probably going to need to go back in the water. All right. Well, we'll let you go back in. All right. There you go, pal. Go join your friends. Right. You want to get out your light and let's see what else we yeah, can find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and see right down there. We've got a red spotted toad. Well, he's much smaller than the other ones, huh? Much, much smaller. And his call is much more higher pitched. So one of the ways we sample these, because in a rainstorm, when these things are gonna start breeding, uh -huh. there's like rain and water pouring down into this. So this is not a safe place for us to hang out. Um, we use audio loggers that record their sounds. And the red spotted toads we hear all the time. The Sonoran toads are much quieter yeah. and harder to pick up. So by studying these Tanahas and the catchments, you're not trying to get rid of the catchments. Tell me a little bit about what you're trying to do by studying both. Well, it lets us know how the, the waters function. And what we want to do is have the catchments function more like these Tanahas so that they end up getting refreshed so that the water that's available after the rains ends up being cleaner, basically, uh, lower ammonia and so forth. And right now that's just not happening. Well, I guess we better get out of here and let these guys do what they do. All right. All right. This was awesome. Oh, well, I'm glad you could come out and join us. Yeah. I can't believe how big they are. So, what did we learn? After discovering that the man-made water catchments in the Sonoran Desert tend to hold on to chemicals that are toxic to amphibians, Texas Tech researchers are now trying to find out the difference between the natural Tanahas and these man-made catchments so that they can make the man-made catchments less toxic. We also discovered just how hot it is in Arizona. It is so hot, I don't know why amphibians even think they can live there, but they do. And so that is why tonight, I'm spending the night in this meat locker. For In the Field, I'm John Davis. See you in the morning. giant glands right here. That's where the people have actually been arrested for milking those. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs>